Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med surge mastery courses. Plus 11 other courses like fundamentals, pediatrics, maternity, mental health, and more. Complete with over 300 follow along cheat sheets and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. All right, guys, let's begin. Here's to opioids, the three tips for opioids. Number one is opioids, guys. Think O's for low and slow vitals. They are CNS depressants, meaning they bind to the opioid receptors in the brain, which sedates the body. So again, the memory trick, opioids, we have low and slow vitals. So low heart rate, low respirations, low BP, and a slow brain, which makes them very deadly. And again, they're not NSAIDs, so there's no antipyretic properties, so it's not going to reduce a fever, and there's no anti-inflammatory properties. So guys, it's not good for gout or rheumatoid arthritis directly. Second is opioids have the O's. So guys, morphine sulfate has an O, hydromorphone, coding, oxycotton, and oxycodone. Now, the weird one here is fentanyl, which we'll cover in another segment. But really, all of them kind of sound like phone. So guys, remember to phone the doctor if you see low and slow vital signs. Now, tip number three is the killer side effects. When do we stop and give the antidote Narcan? Well, guys, low respiratory rate, key term here is respiratory depression. And the key number, we hold dose for respiratory rate below 12. Now, we're always going to teach deep breathing exercises to prevent that atelectasis and pneumonia. But, key word here, we never hold the drug if the patient is not practicing their deep breathing exercises. So we still give the med. Now for low BP, AKA hypotension or orthostatic hypotension, we teach patients to go slow. So slow position changes to prevent fall risk. Now key term, if the client becomes dizzy or lightheaded, guys immediately assist the patient to a seating position. Do not get up unassisted. So teach the patient to use the call light when getting out of bed. Now, lastly, the low brain for the CNS sedation. Key term here is easily falls asleep when talking and unarousable. Guys, we hold any additional narcotics. So monitor the respiratory status. And guys, sedation comes before respiratory depression. So be sure to watch out for this. Now, you may give additional narcotics when the patient's LOC or level of consciousness improves. So when they're easily aroused or only slightly drowsy. Now, if things get too low and slow and our patient starts to overdose, we can always give the antidote naloxone, brand name Narcan. It's an opioid antagonist, meaning it's a reversal agent for opioid overdose, as well as heroin overdose. Now, the memory trick is we think of the X in naloxone, puts an X on the O's in the opioids. Guys, the bad news is that it's gone quickly. So we usually have to give multiple dose. So think naloxone is gone quickly. So the key point here to write down is one to two hour half-life. So we always have to reassess every 60 minutes. And we're monitoring for the persistent low and slow. So guys, the key terms here to write down. A respiratory rate below 12. Unarousable. Falling asleep while talking to you, that was a really big one. As well as prepare for the second dose of Narcan and notify the HCP if we have any of these key terms present. And guys, don't worry about calling a rapid response. We always assess the patient and prepare the Narcan since this is an expected response. Now lastly guys, the priority nursing care is AIMS. So remember, first is A for assess the ABCs. This is priority during a respiratory sedation. I is for intervention of oxygen. M is for make the HCP aware. And S is for a second dose of naloxone. 
And guys, again, there's no need to call for a rapid response unless the airway and breathing are critically low. So below 12 respirations or below 90% O2 sat. Now, as far as IV administration of opioids like morphine and hydromorphone, guys, we minister over two to three minutes IV push. Big key term, not over five to 10 seconds. A fast push usually means a fast death. And we reassess after 15 to 30 minutes, not after an hour. Those are usually for PO opioids. Now, the greatest risk for death is for overdose and respiratory depression. And our patients with advanced age, 70 years or older, or underlying pulmonary disease like COPD or asthma, and even post-surgery 24 hours. Usually these are stressed on the question banks as the highest risk for death. So a big test up here. If you're given an option between two patients, both with respiratory disease, for the most at risk for respiratory depression related to opioids, guys, always choose the oldest patient first or the most recent surgery. Now for short-term side effects that are normal, no need to report to the HCP. A burning during IV push. Well, guys, that's perfectly fine. We don't have to hold the medication for this. We just dilute it and give it a little slower next time. How about pruritus, aka itching? Well, that's also common. No need to report. We just treat with antihistamine like Benadryl. And for nausea vomiting when first starting taking the med. Key point here, write this down. Teach that the tolerance will develop and nausea will improve. So give antiemetics initially like ondasterone, brand name Zofran, and for PO opioids we take with food, not on an empty stomach, which may increase the risk for nausea. Now for long-term side effects, we get a low and slow GI leading to constipation. So key term here is PRN stool softeners and teach preventative measures like fluid, fiber, and moving like ambulation, basically walking. Now, constipation gets worse over long-term administration, and it doesn't get better like the nausea. So many students wanted to hold morphine for a patient with a no bowel movement for two days. Guys, we continue to give this. And a little side note for oxycodone. Guys, just think oxycodone is like an old ox with a slower onset, typically used for extended release. So, Typically for severe chronic pain, example cancer pain, not like immediate release opioids which acts faster. There's a slower onset and extended release, usually over 12 hours. So we give it twice a day. And yes guys, we administer it together with other pain meds. So keywords to write down. We give it as scheduled around the clock. Big one right here, even if not reporting pain. And we commonly give it together with other pain meds. Now for PCA pumps, aka patient-controlled analgesia pump, the indication is it's usually used after surgery for long-term recovery. Now how it works is a certain amount of medication is set into the pump, and each time the button is pressed, it delivers that medication. So key points here. Guys, client only can push the button. No one but the client will push the button. Not the family, not the nurse, not the doctor. So guys, nursing care here. When do you notify the HCP for an increased dose? Well, only if the patient attempts are twice the dose of the med given. So if the patient still reports pain, well, the first action for you guys to do is a thorough pain assessment. So be careful. Tess will always ask for the best nursing response or the priority action. In the NCLEX world, the priority is always assessment before intervention because NCLEX wants you to follow the nursing process. So guys, remember the acronym AIR. A for assessment before I intervention and then R for reassessment. Now for fentanyl, one of the most potent narcotics known to mankind. (laughs) Now, sorry to be so creepy, guys, but guys, fentanyl is one of the main reasons why a lot of people are overdosing during this opioid crisis. 
Fentanyl is a very potent narcotic for use for severe pain. Now, fentanyl patch is the form it usually comes in. So it's used for chronic pain. So guys, just think patches are for persistent pain, not acute pain. And it does not provide immediate pain relief since patches are absorbed slowly and it can take up to 17 hours for full effect. So guys, it's not to be used for acute pain. So keywords here, not for post-op pain or intermediate pain. You always want to clarify the order with the HCP. Now, it is appropriate for allergies to coding. Now, as far as patient teaching, Kaplan says that a fentanyl patch, the big side effect is constipation. So we use stool softeners daily. And ATI says that tolerance has developed if increased doses are required for pain relief. And as far as HESI, we always remove old patches before applying new ones. And you cleanse the area that the old patch was on and always place the patch over dry skin. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.